A student fires a cannonball horizontally from a height of 63 meters with a speed of 27 meters per second. So in this problem, it's a complete problem where you have an object moving in a curved path, so it's a two-dimensional motion problem. So I need to set up kind of two parts of this problem, the x or horizontal part of the problem, and the y, which is the vertical part of the problem. So under each of these, I'm going to write initial speed, average speed, final speed, distance, time, and acceleration. Alright, so let's look at the given in the problem. By the way, this problem will require five given. So a one-dimensional motion problem requires three, a two-dimensional motion problem requires five. So 63 meters, we see that is the height. Now height is generally measured vertically, so that is going to be my vertical distance is 63 meters. Next, it says a speed of 27 meters per second. That was the launch speed. The launch speed was to the right, so that means my initial, uh, initial horizontal speed will be 27 meters per second, which is another given. All right. After the ball leaves the cannon, so for the duration of our problem, the ball is in free fall, which means the vertical acceleration will be 10 meters per second squared. And since gravity pulls down, but nothing's pulling left or right, the horizontal acceleration will be zero, which means the horizontal speed will be constant. But these three actually only count as one given. So there is one last given. And that comes from the fact that when the ball was launched, the ball was launched horizontally to the right, but it was not moving up or down. So the initial vertical speed is going to be zero. So now we have our five given, and we can start solving the problem. So I always start on the side where I have three given. In that case, it is the vertical. So I have three given over here. I see I have distance and acceleration, and I can use the equation t equals the square root of 2d over a to figure out that the time is 3.55 seconds. If I do that, so that was step number one. Step number two, to find the final speed, I can do the initial speed plus a times t, since the initial speed is zero, it's just a times t, will give me 35.5 meters per second. I actually didn't really need to find these, but we'll go ahead and get the average speed by cutting that 35.5 in half, and that gives me 17.8 meters per second when I round to three sig figs. All right, the next thing I can do is I know that, okay, that's how long it'll take the object to hit the ground. So However long the ball was moving down, that has to be the same amount of time that the ball was moving to the right. So those two times are going to be the same in 3.55 seconds here. The distance then can be calculated by doing the average speed times the time. So 27 times 3.55 giving me 95.9 meters. All right. So answering the questions on the left side, what was the cannonball's initial horizontal speed? That was given to us as 27 meters per second. The initial vertical speed was zero because the cannonball was not moving upwards or downwards when it was launched. The ball remained in the air. How long did the ball remain in the air is asking us for time, which is 3.55 seconds. And how far from the building will the ball land? Well, that is going to be measured along the ground. So from the building to the ball's landing, that is going to be my horizontal distance of 95.9 .9 meters.